In this chapter, I'm going to go over setting some user preferences. Now, most of this is going to boil down to your own personal preference, but I'm just going to go over a few things here and there that I think are important for you to take a look at and possibly change. So let's open up User Preferences by going to the File menu and selecting User Preferences. Under the first tab, the Interface tab, we have some basic options for things like Display, View Manipulation, and the Manipulator. Now under this, the Display options, you have things like Tool Tips. So if you hover over a tool or a value field, it'll actually tell you a little bit about what it does and what it's there for. And there's other things like um, Display Mini Axis. That's in the bottom left corner of the 3D view. That's in your way. You can always disable it or you can actually make it bigger. Just simple things like that. Now, under the view manipulation options, there actually are a few important things here. The first thing I would suggest enabling is called Auto Depth. The tooltip says, use the depth under the mouse to improve view, pan, rotate, and zoom functionality. Now, that's all a bunch of gibberish to you right now, I'm sure. But let's enable that. And minimize that for a second. Let's see exactly what that does. Now auto depth takes the depth underneath the cursor to improve scene manipulation. I'm just going to duplicate this cube a couple times and show you what that means. So if I rotate the view with the mouse hovered over the middle cube here, you'll see the scene is rotating around that cube. Now that's basically what it did before. Now let's middle click over the top left cube here and drag the scene. Now you'll see that rotating the scene is based on where I clicked on that cube. It took the point on the cube that the mouse is over and it uses that as the rotation point for the scene. And you can do that with any mesh. If you click on it and rotate the scene with the middle mouse button, it's going to rotate based on the point on that mesh that the cursor is over. So it's really useful when um, dealing with a lot of objects in your scene. Now let me just show you real quick how it worked without auto depth enable. So I disable an auto depth and now let's go back and we'll rotate the scene. It rotates based on how you have the scene pan and it could get kind of confusing. So that's why I enabled something like auto depth because wherever you click is where the scene will rotate and that just makes sense to me. So we're going to go back into user preferences and enable auto depth and save those user settings. Now another thing that makes a lot of sense to me is to enable zoom to mouse position which is basically going to be the same thing. Wherever the mouse is located when you zoom in and out it's going to zoom based on that position. So if I want to zoom into that cube, all I have to do is move the cursor over the cube and zoom in. If I want to zoom in over this cube, same thing. I'll move the cursor there and I'll zoom in and out. That makes sense to me, so I'm going to leave that enabled. Now we have something called Rotate Around Selection. That's basically somewhat like Auto Depth but it won't take the mouse position into account. It will actually rotate the scene around whatever object is selected. So it's similar in a way, but auto depth to me is still much more sensible. And unfortunately we can't have them both enabled. Rotate around selection will override auto depth. So I'm going to leave rotate around selection disabled. And that's basically all I would change in this section, oh, except for Smooth View. Smooth View is basically, well, let me show you. If I go into Front View, Side View, and then Top View, you can see how it actually sort of animates from one view into the next. That's what Smooth View is. If we put Smooth View down to zero, it will instantly go into the different view. So let's do that. Smooth View down to zero. Now front view, side view, top view, no matter what view you go into, it won't be animated from one view to the other. It will be instant. And that's just going to help make the scene go a lot faster, make, your, uh, make going through your project a lot quicker. 
but for presentation purposes, it's actually useful to have Smooth View cranked up a little bit because it adds a bit of extra style. So if you're showing a client a blend file, uh, you might want to keep Smooth View on so that when you go from one view to the other, it animates it and it makes it all look um, very stylish. But for editing purposes, I keep it off because when I want to go into side view, I want it to be instant. I don't want to be waiting for it. That just doesn't make sense. So back in user preferences, uh, that's pretty much all I would change under the interface tab. Now let's move on to the input tab. Now there's some important things here. Like for example, emulate three button mouse. We enabled that earlier so that uh, people without a middle mouse button could instead hold the alt key and left click as a substitute for the middle mouse button. Now another thing I would enable is continuous grab which is right below emulate three button mouse. So let's enable that and let me show you what that does real quick. Minimize user preferences and let's say I have this cube here and I want to stretch it out. So I'm going to scale it on this axis and as my mouse begins to get closer to the edge of the window normally it would stop right there. But with continuous grab it just shows up on the other side and we can continue scaling this up infinitely. So I'm going to leave that enabled because that's going to be very useful. Let's see, what else we got? Well, we have emulate numpad, which I went over before. If you don't have a numpad on your keyboard, you can enable that and use your number row um, instead of your numpad to switch views. And orbit style is just different ways of rotating when you rotate the scene. You can play around with that if you want. I'm just going to leave it as the default, which is turntable. And zoom style. This is something that I always like to change to continue zoom. Now you can play with the other zoom styles, but continue zoom, let me show you how this works. Continue zoom will continue zooming in until you let go of left click. Same thing with zooming out. It will just keep going without moving the mouse. I mean, you move the mouse down a little, and it'll keep zooming out. Move the mouse up a little, and it'll continue to zoom in. Thus the name Continue Zoom. This has always been the most effective zoom for me. So I'm going to keep that enabled as Continue Zoom. And that's basically it for this page. All of this stuff on the right side here is key configuration. If you want to assign different hotkeys to different tools and actions, then be my guest and you can play around with this mess. But I've learned everything with the default settings, so I'm just going to leave everything the same. Now, if you've changed anything on this page, make sure to hit Save User Settings at the bottom left. Now let's move on to Add-ons. This section is basically a section for, pu for plugins cool things that you can enable to give you more options to play with or keep disabled to have less clutter in your menus for example the save runtime option for the game engine is currently disabled but you can enable it through this add-ons page and um, once that's enabled it'll appear in the file menu so you can save your blender games there are also some, there are also some sweet tools like bolt factory which allows you to quickly add a mesh bolt and customize the settings for it in the operator panel in the 3d view you can enable and disable add-ons using the checkboxes to the right to the right side of them. Like for example, here's a add-on called Sapling, which allows you to add um, trees and has lots of different options for them. And you can make pretty decent-looking trees very quickly. And Bolt Factory, which I mentioned, is right here, which allows you to add nuts and bolts. And you can enable and disable them just by using the checkboxes to the right. In the Extras chapter in Volume 2, I'm going to go over some of these awesome add-ons, including Bolt Factory. Now, if you've enabled or disabled any of these, then you can just go down to the left, bottom left, and click on Save User Settings. Now let's move over to the Themes tab. Under this tab, if you want to spice up your layout, you can change all the default colors for the program in this tab. So if you're someone like Pablo Vasquez, you would definitely be changing this to lots of pinks and purples and very vibrant colors and you'd have a pretty awesome looking program but I'm very plain and very boring so most of my stuff is going to be grayscale so I'm just going to leave 
all of these as is because I'm happy with the way Blender looks. That's basically all the noteworthy user preferences that I feel like mentioning right now. So if you've changed anything while going through all of this, make sure to click on Save User Settings and just close it.